Today's review is on the first episode of the eighth season of Mom, titled Sex Bucket in the Grammar Police. It's the first episode of the show without Anna Ferris, whose character Christy got into Georgetown Law School on full scholarship. One night, Bonnie and Adam dropped off Christy at the airport. Bonnie cries, and Adam eventually did once Bonnie mentioned the Father's Day card Christy gave him. Here is the first Mom theme song intro without Christy. Man, that's weird. At an AA meeting, we find out Tammy always wanted a slumber party since she was 14, especially since her birthday is coming up. Her father is also out of prison and is trying to track her down to wish her a happy birthday. Her father killed her mother. Wait, whoa. Her father killed her mother? What What happened? What, like he accidentally killed her? Like a, you know, it was accidental or what? Because the man was able to get out of prison and now he's trying to track down Tammy to wish her a happy birthday. Wow. Bonnie decides to throw a slumber party. But Marjorie had plans weeks ago to take Tammy out to dinner for her B-Day. But Bonnie thinks it's a better idea. The girls play games like Never Have I Ever and Truth or Dare. When playing Never Have I Ever, Wendy tells the girls that she killed a male patient of hers. And she feels that it was her fault. Marjorie dared Bonnie to go to a gas station wearing a bra over her outfit. And she sings the You Made Me Feel Like a Woman song by Aretha Franklin to some guy who works at a gas station. They come back and continue playing Truth or Dare. When Wendy asks Jill how many times her and Andy have sex, Jill said at least 12 to 15 times. Oh my goodness, 12 to 15 times? Is that possible for anybody to have sex 12 to 15 times? Man, well Jill seemed like she a freak anyways. To me, she just looked like she good in bed. She just seems like she's a freak. <laughs> Kudos for her, but 12 to 15 times? Wow. So Tammy asked her if she ever gets bored. She doesn't, especially when her and Andy are doing some role playing. Then the girls have a pillow fight. Marjorie goes at Bonnie by letting her have it. Bonnie then hits Marjorie back, and Marjorie falls on the couch. Marjorie angrily gets up and goes into the kitchen. Wendy asks Bonnie what is wrong with her. But Bonnie was like, What? She was wailing me. Tammy told her that she was out of line, and Jill told her that they do not hit the elders. Bonnie is like, whatever, and she goes to her room. So Wendy goes in the kitchen to check up on Marjorie. Marjorie is eating cookie dough. But the way she's holding it, it she acts as if she's eating a burrito for crying out loud. And so Marjorie decides that it's time for her to leave, and that the slumber party was pretty much a bust, and it was over. But Bonnie was not going to allow that to happen as she goes outside and confronts Marjorie and asks her why is she acting grumpy and whatnot. Marjorie mentions that something's wrong with her heart. So she goes back inside and she tells the rest of the women what's going on. And apparently she needs a stent to put in her heart. And Wendy asked her why didn't she tell them. Marjorie told her that well, it's Tammy's birthday, and she didn't want to ruin it. But Tammy said it's okay. It felt like it was ruined anyway, so whatever. Jill came up with this idea that they should play another game, and it's Fear Bucket, where all the women have to write their own fears and throw in the fire. But it cannot be about Marjorie dying. Wendy, Tammy, Bonnie, and uh, Marjorie herself, apparently they wrote what they wrote on a card and come to find out they all wrote Marjorie dying. That was their fear. And so they erased it. <laughs> so they played a fear bucket game. Wendy's fear was she's afraid of making a mistake at work when it comes to hurting someone. Tammy's fear is that if she doesn't answer her father's call, she feels that she will have regrets. But if she does answer, she feels like she'll be betraying her own late mother. Jill's fear is that the reason why her and Andy only have sex is because they have nothing to talk about. Marjorie's fear is that she's afraid that she won't see her granddaughter grow up. And Bonnie's fear is that she says that she's afraid of spiders, but nobody's not buying that. You could tell that obviously that's not what Bonnie actually wrote. And then Jill looks at what Bonnie actually wrote and it says that Bonnie's afraid the people that she knows that they don't know that she loves them so much. 
And then Bonnie going to act like, no, I meant to write spiders. Yeah, right, Bonnie. Come on. So it turns out that the slumber party worked out. So in the end, the women are going to sleep as it's 4 o'clock in the freaking morning. They're still up at 4 o'clock in the freaking morning. Tammy tells them that this was the best slumber party ever. They appreciate what they've done for her. And then as they're about to go to sleep, Bonnie's phone rings and she talks to Christy. And I love how Wendy tells Bonnie that she appreciate her remembering that she told her that she had sex at someone's funeral. But it wasn't at the church. It was like at the cemetery. What the heck? Who the heck have sex at a cemetery? Whether it's day or night at a cemetery having sex. What? So I'm glad that Bonnie remembers the time when Wendy told everyone that she had sex at a funeral. And I like how so far this season, Wendy hasn't been crapped on. Because it seems like sometimes Wendy is like, she's ignored by others, even like her friends in the, the group. She, she's like, you know, Meg in Family Guy. Wendy is like the Meg of Family Guy in Mom. She's the Meg in Mom. Sometimes she gets treated like crap. It's like people forget about her, that she even exists. It's like, I don't understand why Wendy is treated like crap. I mean, she seems like a very nice character in the show, so it's like, why does she have to get crapped on? I mean, even Bonnie would, like, treat her like crap sometimes. But it's like, as Bonnie has, her character has grown, she's got some character development. She's, she's not like that towards Wendy anymore, which is a good thing. Especially last season, that one episode where she feels like nobody cares about her. And then Bonnie, you know, was there to comfort her. What are you doing here? Even though you're a nurse, you are not responsible for Mary's death. I know. And what's going on? Why aren't you at her memorial? I just didn't feel like going. Well, no one ever feels like it. Oh, it's a sunny day. Maybe we should have a picnic in the park and then catch a funeral. <laughs> Come on. Get dressed. You're going. I really don't want to. Your friends are there. Yeah, right. What's that supposed to mean? All my friends. Yes, your friends, the people you see every day. You mean the people who don't know me any better than they knew Mary? That's not true. We know you. Where am I from? <laughs> <laughs> the United States of America. <laughs> Florida. We've been friends for five years. You don't even know I'm from Florida. We've been friends for five years? <laughs> See? Fine. Two can play at this game. Where am I from? You were born in Bakersfield. Your mother abandoned you at a firehouse in Fresno when you were four, and then you lived at 12 different foster homes. Well, my story is very memorable, especially the way I tell it. <laughs> Did you know I have two moms? And that was before it was cool. <laughs> you do? We lived on a houseboat in the Keys. Well, that's fascinating. I told you that a hundred times, but no one listens to me. Sometimes I think you just keep me around because you feel sorry for me. OK, OK, let's blow out the candles on this pity party. You are a huge part of this group. I am not. Come on, when I relapsed, you never left my side while I was detoxing, even after I took a swing at you. You're loyal and kind, and you show up for everyone, no matter what. And yes, it's true, I don't know a lot about your lesbian seafaring upbringing. <laughs> But I do love you. And it's on me that you don't know that. That's nice to see. That's so refreshing to see. But so far this season, Wendy hasn't been treated like crap like she usually does. And hopefully it stays that way. So far, season eight of Mom is actually not so bad. It's actually still good. I've laughed my butt off watching some of the episodes, so it's still good even without Anna Ferris. because I, I thought Mom was not going to be so good without her. I mean, it still feels weird, and it still doesn't feel right without her, but it's, it's still good. This has been my review on the first episode, Season 8 of Mom. It was actually a good episode. I liked how they helped out Tammy. Some of you guys are like, wait, grown-ups can have slumber parties? I thought it was just for kids. Well, I guess that goes to show to you that just because you're an adult doesn't mean you can't have slumber parties. Adults having slumber parties, it's not going to be the exact same way as it was when you were a kid. But, you know, it's totally different. Like, I'm sure women can have slumber parties with them talking about guys and, you know, eating chocolates and ice cream and 
doing each other's makeovers and nails and stuff and watching movies and, and stuff like that or watching soap operas if they want and listen to music. Or like guys, if guys have slumber parties, they can probably like grab a couple of beers if they're into alcohol and just chill, watch TV and movies and stuff and play video games or whatever and talk about women. You know, that could be a slumber party. So, yeah, I guess you're never too old for slumber parties. Just like some people will say that you're not too old for trick-or-treating. Anyways, that's it. Later.